Hello everyone, in this video I'd like to give you a few tips on picking better fruit. So when people start doing a fruit based diet or a raw vegan diet or they want to introduce more fruit into their diet, one of their big questions is where do you buy the fruit? Where do you go and get fruit? And sometimes they maybe assume that there are different places that people who are you know, long-term fruit eaters, fruitarians, raw vegans, that there's different places that they go for fruit or different places that they buy fruit from. And I can understand why people think that. And there's a perception that the quality of the fruit, especially if you live in a country that imports a lot of its fruit in, like the UK, there's an impression that the fruit is poor quality or is just generally not very good also an impression that it's not very nutritious and so on and a lot of people who aren't even fruit lovers will say oh the fruit in the supermarket is terrible you know um i hate the fruit in the supermarket and stuff like that and what i've really found over the years is that the people that are actually doing a diet like this long term are generally speaking pretty happy to source their fruit from the same places that most people buy most of their food so when people say to me where do you get your fruit my answer would be the same place that you get your food i go to the supermarkets the local shops even the petrol station just beside me here and i will get fruit and I will get good fruit. And the, the, the difference really becomes that what you have to become is better at picking fruit rather than finding a particular location. There's never going to be a place or somewhere that you can order from or a particular stand or anything that's just all good fruit or all perfect fruit or all ripe fruit. You're just not going to find that. So what you might end up doing is traveling to different places for different things, potentially. Um, but you're not going to really find one place that everything is perfect and, and amazing all the time. Fruit is a, you know, it's a natural food. It's a seasonal fruit food. Every year it will change slightly. There might not be as much of a certain variety one year. You might have a year where there's none of a certain variety. There was one year in the UK where for some reason we didn't allow in the Indian and Pakistani mangoes in summer. We just didn't let them in. There was some issues with with them in some way and they just stopped. They just didn't let them in that year. We didn't import them at all or virtually at all. So things like that change. Varieties change the climate changes things so fruit is never consistent and and people don't really like that they like the idea of food being the same all the time that's very simple processed food fast food it's the same every time and people kind of like that but you're never going to quite get that with fruit although you are going to get something quite uh, quite same quite similar but there, there is always going to be changes in things that happen. But really, it's about becoming better at picking good fruit. When you're better at picking fruit, then you can really go anywhere and you'll always be satisfied with, with what you get. I think as well that people have developed these very high expectations. Um, the amount of times in your life you're going to have a truly exceptional fruit meal or, or eat some truly exceptional fruit is unfortunately going to be relatively rare even if you grow your own fruit even if you're in a, a particular a, a good climate or whatever uh, pardon me oh nearly sneezed there oh, not quite the chances of you just have amazing fruit all the time is is unlikely. These are rare sort of special moments that happen once in a while. 
Um, so it all comes down to your ability to pick good fruit. And what are the, the best tips? Well, it's slightly different for every variety of, of fruit. Of course, with things like bananas, it's very easy. That's more about uh, buying them in advance so that they ripen. But the bananas are going to be pretty good all the time. Um, things like pineapples are another fruit that are they're basically available all the time. Pineapples are very hard to tell if they're if they're sweet or not or good or not. It's kind of hard to tell. People, some people will say, well, if they're yellow, they're good. If they're green, they're not good. That's not exactly true. You really have to try a lot of fruits. And pineapples are relatively cheap, but there isn't a particular rule of thumb there. You can buy a completely green pineapple and it will taste good. Really good. There's, there's, there's not really any rule there with that. With things like mangoes and other stone fruits, you generally want them to be, to some degree, ripe already when you buy them. Um, you want them to feel a little soft. And you can tell that by the look as well. If it looks rock hard, you can see it. You don't need to touch it. You can see that it looks rock hard. You can verify by touching. But... I never buy mangoes that are rock hard. The chance that they will ripen properly is less like much less likely than if they're already slightly they've got a give to them. And that's the same with the other stone fruits. If they're rock hard, no good. Um, if they look a little wrinkled, the stone fruits generally not that great either. Usually a bit mealy. So you want fruits to look swollen. I think is the right way of thinking about it. Like like the flavours bursting out. Like the the juice wants to burst out. So if you see that swollen look, that's a good look. But it shouldn't be rock hard. And it shouldn't be wrinkled with the, with the stone fruits. When we get to things like, so let's say apples. Um, well, apples can be ripe and be rock hard or be very hard and they can be ripe and be soft it depends on the variety i prefer soft apples i'd rather eat more so i'll usually feel but i'll also look and see if they look like they're sort of ripe there's a look of ripeness as well um grapes are essentially always ripe you buy them ripe the berries, um, blueberries are essentially always ripe. Different varieties will be better than others. It depends on the variety as well. My favourite variety of grape is called Flame. They only come into season once in a while. They don't, they're not in the shop the whole year through. You start to get used to that. Um, at this time of year, you've got persimmons. Well, you want persimmons to be nice and uh, a nice deep colour, a strong colour. Um, and it doesn't really matter with persimmons you can buy them hard they'll generally ripen even if they're hard they're, they're one that they'll usually ripen okay but it's nice to find them soft if you can find them softer that's great there's a bit of a debate as to where, how you eat them some people eat them a bit firmer some people don't some varieties you can't eat firm because they, they have an astringent effect on the mouth but you're rarely going to get persimmons that don't ripen pretty well. It just might take a long time for them to ripen. So you have to buy them in advance. Uh, other fruits. Melons. Melons is another, is, an, is, is another one. I think it's pretty hard to tell. They should, to me, they should look swollen. That is the feeling to me that they're, that they're ripe. Um, there's a swollen feeling rather than a deflated look to them. Um, an inconsistent colour pattern. If they're just green the whole way around, like the watermelon, it should look to me. It should look like it's bursting, like like the colour's inconsistent because there's certain areas that are kind of swollen a bit more. But it'll depend on the flavour test, you know. But there's plenty of melons that I don't look at that I won't try because I just think that's not 
that's not going to be all that good. Um, melons are one that I'm less uh, I buy less consistently. But one of one of my friends, Matthew, was saying, and he's been a raw vegan about eight years. He was saying the certain fruits that he doesn't buy as much of because he doesn't know them as well. Whereas with melons, he knows what he's looking for. So if you learn about a particular fruit and you get better and you eat it more and you choose it more, you'll start to learn the telltale signs of when it's ripe or not. But I personally, I don't think I can rely on melons. They're not to me a very reliable fruit. They're something that will buy if it looks good. There's varieties that come in like snowball melons that are almost always good. But they're a bit of a disappointment fruit. They're a bit of a like, oh, this melon. People always say, oh, I bought this melon. It wasn't that good. Yeah, it's a disappointment fruit. Like, you need to really know that it's good. They're, to me, they're a, they're a fruit that I would I would only buy very seasonally. And melons aren't like high up on my list, uh, personally. But um, some a lot of people like melons. Um they give the illusion that you're eating a lot. For some people that like to give the illusion they're eating a lot. Uh, you can eat a big melon, it's only 200 or 300 calories or something. It's not a great big meal. Unless you're like my friend Matthew that has four or five for a meal. You know, that's what you have to do to eat a, a good quantity of melons. So... Um, but, you know, there'll be some parts of the world where melons are fantastic. Some parts of the US where there's, uh, you know, where you're growing your own watermelons and stuff like that. And uh, and, and that and that's great. Um, what other fruits? Citrus. Citrus, once again, is, is to me, it sh once again, it shouldn't be hard and tight, you know. Uh, but still there'll be times that there's all all these rules there's exceptions to it sometimes there's really hard fruits that taste great uh, you know there's really wrinkled fruits that taste great so there'll be a melon that looks bad to me but someone will give it to me it'll be oh it actually tastes quite good there's always exceptions but you want to go per personally I go with the odds I'm a I play the percentage game. You know, in the sport of snooker, if you've ever played snooker, um, some people play an attacking game in snooker. So there's a big, there's a long shot, uh, which is quite difficult to pot. And if you if you miss it, you leave your opponent a chance. Um, but if you're an attacking player, you'll go for the shot because you believe in your, uh, your 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 skill. But the defensive player, the percentage player, will know. The percentage chance of me getting that pot is so much and the chance that the other opponent's going to win from that position. And they'll do that kind of calculation and go, right, I'm just going to play safe. Um, that's what I am with my fruit. I'm a percentage player. Uh, maybe if I was a bit more... I don't know. I guess, like, I don't even want to carry fruit that I'm not 100% sure is going to be good. It's not going to be about purchasing it as much as, like, carrying it, having to throw it away, when I sort of know it's not going to be good. Why even try? But some people will be happy. They'll take that 10% chance that's good. I, I don't want to take the 10% chance. I want a 75% chance plus that it's going to ripen. And that's where I'm, that's where I'm at consistently. <laughs> Maybe higher. I'm rarely buying fruit and going, oh, that's that that's terrible. I'm rarely buying fruit and it's not good. So I bought these grapes today. I I bought these grapes, right? I went to Aldi. No, I went to I went to Tesco petrol station. It's a petrol station. Is there any chance that that's not a good grape? Is there any chance that's not a good grape? There's like zero chance. Is it the best grape ever in the world? No. Is it the most exceptional fruit? No. Is it totally edible and sweet and enjoyable to eat? Yeah. Completely. It looks good. It looks healthy. So, 
I, I play a high percentage game. I would say that something... Um, let's get back to Citrus for a second. Citrus, the, the colour. You want a strong colour. You want that strong, deep orange. But you'll get light and bad coloured citrus. It tastes good too. This is the thing. It's just I want to play, play the percentage game. I also want to feel it and see how easy it is to, to um, take the skin off. Maybe that's a preference. But to me, I tend to find if you can take the skin off, if it feels like the skin's going to come off easily, it's more likely to be riper or better. The worst thing with citrus is when it's dry inside, like that kind of dry citrus. Um, and you don't want citrus, it's like impossible to get the skin off. Um, you you want to watch out for that. So you want a nice feeling about it, a good colour. You don't want it to be rock hard. Um, and, and that's what you really want, your citrus. And you probably want to go towards the smaller ones, the easy peelers, the clementines, these things. You're going to have less success with the bigger oranges. You did... Definitely the bigger oranges are less likely to be really good. You're more likely to get bad bigger oranges, I would say. The smaller seems to be more consistent. I don't know why. Blood oranges are really great. If you can find them in season, usually in the winter, January. But, you know, you don't get them everywhere. Uh, what, what, what other fruits? I mean, cherries, it's just about looking at them. If they look amazing, you know, they're pretty much that's pretty much fine avocado avocado is so changeable um but it's just a feeling is that that's mostly on the feel you know the there's different skin tones that are a bit different with avocado there's the kind of green smooth skin and there's the black uh more kind of dappley skin or whatever you want to call it they're slightly different flavors. I mean, they'll all work pretty well. The one thing with avocado that I can never quite judge is the stringiness. I don't like the strings inside. That's something I try and avoid. Um, but with avocados, you're usually mixing it, adding it into something. You know, but really you're feeling for the texture you like. I like it slightly firmer. Some people want it completely soft. I would buy the soft ones if I'm using it for a guacamole or something like that. Uh, tomatoes. People always say, "No, oh, tomatoes in the supermarket don't have any flavour." Totally wrong. I don't. I don't understand why people say things like that. There's plenty of different varieties in the supermarket. Um, if I go to Aldi, I'll get different ones from Lidl, different ones from Tesco, different ones from Sainsbury's. It's like different types. I go for the smaller ones that tend to have more flavour to me. Plum tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, and various varieties of that kind. Multicolored tomatoes are more common now. Um, so when people just say these things like tomatoes are really bad in the supermarket, that's not true. The bigger ones don't tend to have as much flavor. The smaller ones tend to have more. Um, yeah. Vegetables in general all taste the same all the time. <laughs> there's not many. I don't know. There's not There's not a big deal about vegetables. They're all kind of the same. Uh Celery is pretty much the same all the time. As far as I've ever tasted, you know, lettuce and all that is all the same all the time. Probably there's different varieties that taste a little bit different, but I don't know. It's more about texture, I guess. And uh, I think with vegetables, people are trying to hide the flavour <laughs> quite a lot rather than bring out the flavour. Um, so picking fruit, that's a lot of the basic fruits that you might eat. Now, you might say, well, I don't want that. I want to have jackfruit every day or durian or special fruits. You know, you're going to get used to all those fruits as well. If you go away to somewhere where, there's, where you can get that every day, you'll get used to it. And then you'll start to miss strawberries and you'll be like, I wish I could have some strawberries. Because you'll go to places and they don't have strawberries or they don't have cherries or they don't have apples or they don't have... Um, citrus or whatever it is so around the world you'll you'll generally get bananas all the time pineapples are very common everywhere and um and probably pineapples are better in the tropics to a degree but they're not stunningly better a lot of the time 
but they can't but they can be better oranges are pretty common or orange juice fresh orange juice you can get in a lot of places you can get fresh orange juice here too um Oh, dates and dried... I mean, dates are always good, pretty much. Dried fruit's pretty much always good, if you want... But I wouldn't recommend you make it a staple of your diet, but... Uh, frozen fruit is another thing, if you, if you want to buy that. You can add that to your smoothies. You know, and you might still be saying to me, yeah, but I want something else. You're, you, you, need, you need to get this diet as a simple diet. It's not about special different foods all the time it's about a lifestyle and you can't really create a consistent lifestyle on that you're going to find special amazing fruits all the time i definitely think you should go out and check out some of the indian the chinese shops the specialist retailers uh maybe the online places my exotic fruit and you should check out some of these options and you should buy some special fruits now and again but in terms of building a lifestyle, it will come down to your and being consistent with a raw vegan diet. It'll be it'll be about your ability to consistently go out and pick and find good fruit wherever you go. And every person on this diet is loves the challenge and has the confidence that you can put us anywhere and we'll go out and find fruit that we want to eat. And someone might go, how do you do this? Uh, where, where I live, it's impossible. And I would go and teleport to where they are and spend the day with them and be like, well, we're going to go to the supermarket. I'm going to buy some grapes. I might buy some fresh orange juice that's been squeezed. Um, I'll get some lettuce, avocado, tomato make a simple salad, I'll get some apples, maybe some berries. Like what, how much, maybe some figs, maybe there'll be some dried figs, uh, maybe some dates for a smoothie or something. Like, it's really simple. I don't know if you think that everyone's got to have durian every day or something, or everyone's got to have something something special it's not really about special it's about enjoying and being grateful for the fact that i can go to a petrol station and pick up that and that's amazing and most people go oh it's grapes oh it's just grapes and a friend of mine was like you're buying food at a petrol station are you sure you don't like and he, and he was literally I won't go into personal details, but his diet was not good. <laughs> and probably his liquid consumption was particularly unhealthy at the time. But um, the diet is simple. Get out of your head about it. Picking good fruit is relatively simple. Let me tell you, I've made the mistakes. Years ago, I went to the shop when I started out this diet. And what people do is they go for variety. They go for this, that, that, that. They buy 30 things. They bring it home. They put it all out. And they go, here's what my food haul. This is not the food haul of a raw vegan, an experienced raw vegan. We don't go out and buy 25 varieties of fruit. We go out and buy five, six, and buy them in quantity. Maybe even three. Buy them in quantity. Staples. And then we'll pick other things along the way, along the days. We'll pick up stuff. But what we don't do is 25, 26, 30 varieties of every fruit that we can find. A little, a little, amount, a little amount of each. That's not the way we eat. So, But it's good, it's fine to experiment. But what they should really do is bananas, grapes, apples, you know, some staples, citrus. And... Um, and that's your staples, you know, that's your staple foods. So, anyway, thank you for watching and listening. And if you want to reach out for any advice or put a, a question below, 
I'm open to helping. I'm open certainly to answering <clears throat> answering questions. If you want to come to the festival, we've got a festival, a week long event with accommodation and food provided and classes and lectures and workshops. And you can send a message if you want some more information about that as well. Or go to fruitfest.co.uk. So thank you very much for watching and, and listening and your support. And uh, I'll see you in another video. Thank you.